All right then, so, so far we've mapped the state to our components like this, map state to props, and we've read data from the state. But what if we want to change the state? What if we want, for example, to delete one of these posts on this page, a little delete button or something to delete that? Then what we need to do is interact with the state from this component. Now, if we refer back to this diagram, we have our central state and we've already passed our data via the props to this component. And that's using that function map state to props. Now, if we want to make a change to the state, we have to dispatch an action from the component. And that action is going to contain a type, for example, delete post or add post or whatever. And it's going to contain an optional payload. And in the case of deleting a post, it could be that that payload is the ID of the post we want to delete. So then that action is dispatched to the reducer. The reducer takes the action, checks the type of action, takes in the payload, the ID that we want to delete from the state, and it makes that change to the central state. Then when that changes, we get the updated props inside the component. All right. So we need to figure out a way to dispatch an action from the component right here. And that's pretty simple to do. So like before, when we did map state to props, this time what we're going to do is map dispatch to props. And that's going to map our dispatches to our props so that we can call them from our component. So let's create a const first of all and call this map dispatch to props. Now this is an arrow function and we'll come back to those parentheses in a minute because it takes in a parameter and this parameter is the dispatch method. Now remember, when we worked in CodePen and we were looking at dispatches, we dispatched an action like this. We said the store and then dot dispatch. So dot dispatch like so. And we passed in an action with a type and some additional payload. So that's how we did it then. But what we're doing now is we're mapping dispatch to props. So we're passing this function, which is on the store, through into this function right here as a parameter, which means inside here, we could just say if we wanted to dispatch and then the action. We don't need to say store dispatch anymore, okay? So what we want to do in here is return an object. And this object is gonna represent like it did here, what properties or what functions we're gonna to map to the props of this component. So I want to map a function called delete post because we're going to delete a post inside this component which is the component detail by the way so this delete post right here what i want it to do is dispatch an action so it's going to be a function first of all which will take a parameter and that parameter is going to be the id of the post that we want to delete so it's an arrow function so inside here let us do our function contents and what we'd like to do is dispatch an action like this. Now, the type of that action, this is going to be delete underscore post. And the additional payload we want to send is the ID. So I'll create a property called ID and set that equal to the ID right here that we receive inside this function when we call it. OK, then. So what we're doing now is we're dispatching this action whenever we call this function and this function is going to be attached to our props so we can use it inside the component but before we do that we need to take this and we need to pass it into the connect function down here much like we did with map state to props so map state to props first map dispatch to props second all right then cool so now if we go up to the component over here what i'm going to do is just log to the console the props so we can see that function on the props so console.log and then it's this dot props all right so save that check this out in a browser now we see the props object right here and we can see that we have this delete post method right here and it expects an id so this is the method we'll be calling to delete a post from this post detail component all right so let's do that First of all, we need some kind of button underneath here so that we click that and then it's going to fire this function at some point. So let's create that underneath this P tag. So we'll do a div first of all with a class of center just to centrally align the button inside. This button will have a class of button. This is a materialized CSS class, also a class of gray to color it gray. 
All right, so inside we'll just say delete post. Now we want to attach a click event to this button. So let's say on click and set that equal to some function or other, which we'll define up here. And that function is going to be called handle click. So we'll say this to reference the component dot handle click like so. All right, so let's create that function handle click equals a function. And inside that function, we'd like to call this method right here because we want to delete the post. So we can just say this dot props dot delete post like so and call that function. But remember, we pass in the ID. It expects an ID because we send it inside the action. So we need to send the ID of this post. Now, if you look on the props on the post right here, we have an ID property. So we could just grab that by saying this dot props dot post dot ID. Then we're passing the ID of that post into this function. Okay. So what we're doing is we're calling this function, which is in turn firing this function right here. And inside that function, we're making a dispatch and sending this action to the root reducer. So let's save that and go to the root reducer because this is where we receive the action. So for now, let's just log this to the console. We'll say console.log and then the action. So whenever that action is dispatched, whenever we click on that delete button, then it's going to receive that action right here and it's going to log it to the console. So let's save it and see if this works. So delete post. All right. So it's logging that to the console. Do it again. And it logs it again. Every time we click delete post, it's firing that function, dispatching the action to the root reducer and logging it to the console. So that's good so far. But what we actually want to do is delete this from the state. So to do that, first of all, we have to check the type of action because we don't want to delete it for every action, just if the action type is delete post. So let's perform a little check right here. We'll say if action dot type is equal to delete underscore post, then we're going to do something. And this thing that we're going to do is update the state. Now, Remember, when we update the state, we don't want to do anything destructive. We don't want to alter the original state. We want to work out a non-destructive way to do this. And we can do that using the filter method because the filter method doesn't alter the original array. It creates a new array. So we could say let new posts equal to state dot posts dot filter. And we're going to filter through these posts. So the filter method performs a function on each individual post. And if we return true for that function, then we keep that post in the new array over here. If we return false, then we filter that post out of the new array. So this callback function takes the individual post that we're cycling through at the time. And what we want to do is check, does this post ID equal to the ID we receive on the action? If it does equal the same thing, then what we want to do is return false because that will filter it out of the array. We want to filter it out if they are the same. We want to return true if the action ID and the post ID are not equal. So let's say return action dot ID is not equal to post dot ID. So this is going to be true if these two things are not the same, the IDs on these two things. All right. And remember, we get the ID on the action because we passed it in right here. OK, so then what we're doing now is creating this new array, which should have filtered out the post that we want to. Now we need to return a new object which represents the new state. So we return that right here. Now, remember, we can't just say return and then posts is equal to new posts. We could do in this case. But if in the future we had more properties like users, which was equal to something and then, you know, something else, then what this is going to do is overwrite all of that state object with this object right here, which we don't have a user's property on. So we don't want to do that. First of all, we want to take the current state and we want to spread it like that. So that all of the properties from the state are returned inside this object first, then we override the post property with the new posts. OK, that's what we need to do. So let's save that now and see if this works. So if we come over here and delete post, 
then you see the post goes, right? And if we go back to the home page, that post is no longer there. Now this is okay, but what I'd like to do is that when you delete a post, it redirects you to the home page instead of just seeing this thing right here. So let's do that. We do that inside the component. So if we come up to where we delete the post, this is where we'll redirect the user after this thing has been done. So down here, we can say this.props.history and then use the method called push. We covered this in a previous tutorial. This is how we can redirect someone to another page and we want to redirect them to just forward slash, which is the home page. So if we save this now, all the data should be back. Go back to the home page. And if we click on one of these, delete it, go back to the home page and it's not there anymore. Cool. Delete that. Sweet. And finally that. Awesome. Okay then my friends, so there we go. That is how we map dispatch like this to props, how we call that dispatch from the component itself. When that dispatch is received in the reducer, we can update the state.